Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've decided to take the two parts that I made of If I Wrote Jurassic World Dominion and combine them into one big video. So now if you can't be bothered to watch both parts, you can watch it all here. So this is the entire story. And with that, let's dive right in. <laughs> Part 1 of my version of Dominion would be similar to how the original film was, but since there are no locusts, it gives the film more time to go in depth on the Giganotosaurus. The movie begins in the Manticorp facility sometime in 2014, and Lewis Dodgson along with a live-action Daniel Kahn are checking the process on some of the new dinosaurs that were shipped over from Biosyn Valley. New dinosaurs were delivered to be experimented on with the mind control devices, and the Giganotosaurus was one of those specimens. It was placed in a crate, and throughout part one of the film, the Giga doesn't reveal itself to the audience until the end, building up the tension and suspense. You only see glimpses of its eyes, feet, hands, teeth, or shadow, and you hear growling and roaring. As one of the staff members went to place the mind control device on the dinosaur, the Giganotosaurus went crazy and attempted to break out. The other men tried to seduce it with the electric prods, but that only agitated the creature even more, and soon it broke free from its prison. All you can see is men getting eaten and reacting to what's going on, along with the occasional shadow or tail of the creature. Then the Giganotosaurus proceeds to rampage across the facility, killing everything in its wake, including Big Edie's mate and Little Edie's father. Soon it comes across the Spinosaurus, and this is where we show the Giganotosaurus' true power. Initially, there were two Spinosaurus in the facility, Asset 87 and one other. The other Spinosaurus charged in and tried to fight the Giganotosaurus and didn't go down easy. The Spino got some good hits in, but it wasn't enough, and the Giga grabbed its spine and broke it, killing the Spinosaurus. Asset 87 was forced to retreat after watching his friend get killed by the monster. By this point, Manticorp had gotten choppers and tanks involved and attempted to bring the Giganotosaurus down. After many casualties, the dinosaur was finally captured and recontained into the crate and Dodgson had the creature shipped back to Biosyn Valley for security reasons. Fast forward to eight years later and the events play out similar to how they did in the original film, where Beta and Maisie get kidnapped and it's up to Owen and Claire to get them back. The original trio still make an appearance after they were invited by Dodgson to visit the valley. Grant and Sattler talk with Ramsey Cole about the specimens on the island, and they shiver when he mentions the Giganotosaurus and its dark past. Meanwhile, Owen and Claire meet up with Kayla Watts after escaping Soyona Santos' Atrociraptor squad in Malta, and they head over to Biosyn to rescue Beta and Maisie. The events play out similar, with Claire encountering the Therizinosaurus and Owen and Kayla encountering Rexy and the Giganotosaurus, only this time when Rexy is eating the deer and the ground begins to shake, followed by growling and roaring, she immediately retreats instead of standing her ground. The duo see the dinosaur for the first time, and Owen immediately thinks Allosaurus, but Kayla corrects him and says Giganotosaurus. As they observe the specimen, Owen couldn't help but feel like something was familiar, but he couldn't quite place it. The Giga takes the deer carcass while still not revealing itself to the audience, and it walks away. Meanwhile, Maisie and Beta escape Dodgson and Dr. Wu, just like they did in the original, and Maisie bumps into Grant and Sattler. They also run into the Demetrodons just like they did in the original. Later on, when they're all reunited, they encounter the Giganotosaurus again, who finally reveals itself to the audience, and Owen managed to get a good look at it and realized, oh my god, this thing is part Indominus. The creature lets out a loud roar and goes after the humans. It's only scared off after Claire tasers it in the eye with an electric prod and Dr. Malcolm threw a torch in its mouth. While all of this was happening, 
One of the lit torches set the valley on fire, and now the group has to try and escape the valley. They get to the center and try to take a helicopter out, but are stopped by Lewis Dodgson, who had survived his encounter with the Dilophosaurs. He holds the group at gunpoint and demands them to give back Maisie and Beta, but after they refuse, he's about to shoot them when they hear a roar and the ground shaking. Rexy comes out of the forest and looks around. The group remains still and advises Dodgson to do the same, but he ignores the warning and makes a run for it. Rexy spots him and chases after the villain. She's about to eat him when the Giganotosaurus rushed out from the other side, knocking down a tree and killing Dodgson. The two giant predators circle around each other, just like they did in the original, and Dr. Grant delivers his This Isn't About Us line before the carnivores fight. The group makes a run for the helicopter while Rexy and the Giga have a fierce battle. Only this time, the battle is much more devastating, and the Giga absolutely destroys Rexy. The group watches in horror as the Giga pins Rexy to the ground and lets out a loud roar while a big text that says, To be continued, appears. Part 2 begins where Part 1 ended with Rexy pinned to the ground by the Giganotosaurus as it lets out a loud roar. The humans on the helicopter are horrified by the sight, especially Claire Deering. Watching Rexy brought back memories of the Brachiosaurus and Mount Saibo back in 2018. Claire knew what she had to do. She ordered Kayla to land the helicopter so then she could help Rexy. Naturally, everyone thought she lost her mind but Claire stated that she didn't want to make the same mistake she made back in 2018, and watching that Brachiosaurus die still scarred her to this day. Everyone reluctantly agreed, and Kayla landed the chopper. Dr. Grant and Dr. Malcolm went out with flares to distract the Giganotosaurus, while Claire got out to tend to Rexy. She then ordered the chopper to position itself to pick up the T-Rex. Using the ropes, Claire tied Rexy to the chopper and she, along with Malcolm and Grant, hopped back on board, barely getting out just in time. The Giganotosaurus roared in anger as the chopper left the valley. They didn't stop until they got to a warehouse about a few miles outside of the valley and stored Rexy in there. She was still alive, but in critical condition, and needed immediate medical attention or she would die. This led to Dr. Grant having an argument with Claire over what to do with the dinosaur. Grant points out that this particular Rex isn't as young or as strong as she used to be, and even if she was nursed back to full health, how would they know if she would be able to defeat the Giga, and that maybe they should just let Rexy die? But Claire refused to budge and insisted on healing Rexy, as she was Biosyn's Valley's only chance at restoring the balance. This led to a heated war between two groups, with Owen and Dr. Malcolm siding with Grant, and Kayla and Ramsey Cole siding with Claire. Ellie Sattler had to step in to break the groups up, and told them that there was no use arguing when there were bigger problems, such as the other dinosaurs' lives being at stake from the Giganotosaurus' tyranny. The problem is, no one knew how to restore the balance. Then Maisie stepped in with an idea. She thinks that Rexy can indeed defeat the Giganotosaurus, but not by herself. She was going to need a lot of help. She turned to Owen to see if he could go back to Nevada and get Blue. Owen questioned it at first, but reluctantly agreed, and he along with Dr. Grant went back to Nevada. She then turned to Claire to see if she could borrow Soyona's Atrociraptors, and as crazy as it sounded, Claire was willing to do anything at this point. She and Kayla went off to Malta to visit Soyona. Maisie then turned to Dr. Malcolm and Ramsey Cole, who agreed to return to Biosyn to salvage whatever they could find. As for Ellie Sattler, she and Maisie would stay behind to keep an eye on Rexy. The clock was ticking, and everyone needed to prepare for Maisie's master plan for saving Biosyn Valley. When they got to Nevada, Owen and Alan managed to find Blue and return Beta to her. She sees Dr. Grant and growls at him, but Owen assures her that he's on their side. 
He then tells Blue that they need her help, and she agrees to help since he helped her return Beta to her. Meanwhile in Malta, Claire and Kayla visit a local prison where Soyona Santos is being held. Claire explains the situation to her and says she needs the Atrociraptors to help bring the Giganotosaurus down, but Santos outright refuses. After a back and forth argument between the three women, Claire finally gives up and calls Soyona out, saying that Biosyn Valley is in danger and she and Kayla walk away, leaving Soyona with a lot to think about. Meanwhile, in Biosyn Valley, Ian and Ramsey are searching for anything they could use to try and restore the valley. When they got there, the valley was a total wasteland. Trees were either fallen or burnt to a crisp, and there were dead dinosaurs everywhere. Malcolm was trying his hardest not to cry, and Ramsey just stood there in shock. After a close call with the Giganotosaurus, they are reunited with Dr. Wu, who stayed behind trying to figure out how to defeat the Giganotosaurus and restore the balance. Wu explains to the other two men how he questioned his past actions of creating the Indominus Rex and Indoraptor, and how he warned Dodgson not to modify the Giganotosaurus with Indominus DNA, and that he didn't listen. Back at the camp, Owen and Grant return from Nevada and Claire and Kayla from Malta. Owen managed to get Blue and Beta to help, but now the problem was getting Rexy back to full health. Luckily, Ellie Sattler had been doing research on how to cure Rexy, and she found out that the only way to do so was through a blood transfusion. Owen and Claire then remembered how Blue was in a critical state before, and how they used Rexy's blood to heal Blue, and that maybe she could do the same. Ellie then pointed out that since Blue was a lot smaller, she wouldn't be able to give Rexy enough blood to fully recover her, and Beta was too young for the fusions, so then they would need more participants. Suddenly, the group heard the sound of a helicopter descending at their camp. When it landed, a door opened and a group of men were seen dropping off four crates. One of them had a note taped to it. Claire grabbed the note and opened it up. It read, Dear Claire, I thought about what you said and you're right. As much as I hate you and your boyfriend, I hate seeing an entire ecosystem get destroyed even more. Take care of these raptors or I will personally kill you myself. Signed, Soyona Santos. P.S. Behind this note is a laser pen. The Atrociraptors respond to it. Just point it at your target and press the button and the raptors will pursue it. Ellie then stated that the combination of Blue and the Atrociraptors may be just enough to restore Rexy back to full health. So without wasting another second, the group got to work and hooked the Atrociraptors to the transfusion. They managed to do the trick and Rexy was now back to full health. Now the issue was getting everything back to the valley. The men who dropped off the Atrociraptors said they would help transport the raptors while the group would focus on getting Rexy, Blue, and Beta to the valley. When they finally got to Biosyn Valley, the group were shocked by the wasteland in front of them. They reunited with Malcolm, Ramsey, and Wu and told them their plan and they released Blue and the Atrociraptors to try and track down the Giganotosaurus. Beta wanted to help, but Blue stopped her and shook her head. Meanwhile, Ellie and Alan were having trouble getting Rexy out of the crate. The dinosaur was having horrible flashbacks of her last fight with the Giga, and outright refused to leave the crate. Then Dr. Grant left to join the group, while Sattler stayed behind with Rexy. It wasn't long before the raptors found the Giganotosaurus, who was busy fighting a Therizinosaurus. The Therizino was struggling to defend itself, and it looked like it was going to die. Claire used the laser she got from Soyona and pointed it at the Giganotosaurus. She then pressed the button, setting the Atrociraptors off, which then proceeded to attack the Giga. Blue soon joined in, and the five raptors worked together to try and bring down the big threat. Unfortunately, even with the combined efforts, it was no use. Claire then took matters into her own hands and snatched a flare from Grant's pocket. Claire, what are you doing? Owen shouted. Then she turned to him and said, Take care of Maisie for me, 
as she threw the flare at the Giganotosaurus to get its attention. She then tried to run away from the monster, but it caught up to her and killed her. No! Owen shouted as he rushed over to stop her, but Grant pulled him back and said that it was too late. The Giganotosaurus managed to overpower the raptors, and it let out a loud victory roar. Another roar was spawned, and everyone looked over, and sure enough, there was Rexy rushing out of the jungle towards the Giganotosaurus. The two giants then clashed again, and Rexy was soon joined by the raptors once more. This even gave the Therizinosaurus enough time to recover and join the fight. It was the most epic battle anyone had ever seen, and with the combined efforts of Rexy, Blue, the Atrociraptors, and the Therizinosaurus, they manage to overwhelm the Giganotosaurus, and Rexy pins it to the ground. She's about to kill the Giga when she notices a shadow rising over her, and she quickly moves out of the way. As the Giganotosaurus was getting up, it was pinned back down by the feet of a passing Dreadnoughtus, which crushed the Giganotosaurus's body and finally killing it. Rexy, the Therizinosaurus, and the Raptors all roar in victory as the Dreadnoughtus rushes back into the jungle. Blue looks over at Owen once more, who nods his head in approval before calling over Beta, and she, along with the other dinosaurs, go back into the jungle. As for the humans, they returned back to the U.S., and a funeral was held in Claire's honor in Nevada. Time passes, and Owen is now a single father and comfortable enough to send Maisie to school. Alan and Ellie get back together, and Dr. Malcolm continues to spread the chaos theory around the world. As for the dinosaurs in the Biosyn Valley, it took some time, but the valley managed to make a full recovery, and Dr. Wu, Ramsey Cole, and Kayla Watts now work full-time as caretakers for the dinosaurs. Rexy is the new queen of Biosyn Valley, and Blue and Beta are accepted by the Trosoraptors into their pack. Back in Nevada, Owen sits over by a hill and looks out at the town below him, and Maisie sits beside him. Owen tells her that Claire would be very proud of the young woman Maisie had become, and they both agreed that this was a happy ending indeed, and the credits roll. And that is the end of my version of Jurassic World Dominion. What are your thoughts? How cool would the movie have been if it was more like this? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.